Modern popular culture has a fascination with ninjas. They are prominently featured in video games, comic books, movies and novels. Many characters that we consider modern, like Batman in particular, are heavily inspired by stories of ninjas. And yet all this might be based on a fantasy. The ninja were likely not what you imagine them to be. They did not wear all black. Ninjutsu, or shinobi no jutsu, is not a fighting style. And they were not the sworn enemy of the samurai. As hard as I looked, I couldn't find any secret ninja training method for jumping higher. In fact, they probably weren't even called ninjas until recently, with shinobi being the more accurate pronunciation of the kanji. But before you get too disheartened and dismiss the whole notion of ninjas being awesome, keep in mind that reality was in some ways even cooler. Who were the ninjas really? Ninjas actually had a lot more in common with modern CIA or MI6 agents. What makes them even cooler though is that unlike those agents, they would also be required to engage with the enemy from time to time, essentially combining the roles of the intelligence officers with that of special ops. They would infiltrate enemy castles, collect information and potentially leave a trail of chaos and destruction in their wake, all without being noticed. A shinobi was actually a classification of samurai warrior who would be tasked with espionage, guerrilla warfare, arson and assassination missions and would utilise stealth, disguise and a range of tools in order to complete those jobs. So the shinobi were not the enemies of the samurai any more than spec ops are the enemy of army infantry. They were simply different roles within feudal Japan's military force between the 15th and 17th centuries. Many of the principles and ideas driving the use of ninjas were imported from the Chinese military strategist Sun Tzu, author of Art of War. This seminal text on asymmetric warfare emphasises the importance of terrain, timing and strategy in conflict, and it's still incredibly relevant today. By taking strategic advantage of the land, the element of surprise, and most importantly, deception, a small army can take on a much larger one. Likewise, by using a few stealthy and strategic ninjas, it would be possible to thwart the efforts of a much larger army through surprise attacks and guerrilla warfare. They were employed to this end by the feudal lords, daimyos, of their era. If you needed someone to scope out an enemy encampment for entry points, you would send a ninja. If you needed someone to break into a castle in the dead of night to kidnap a military general's daughter, you would send a ninja. There isn't a ninja fighting style then because this training was supplementary to basic samurai training. Shinobi no Jutsu was a series of strategies, concepts and instructions to aid with espionage and deception. The fighting style they did use would likely have been Kenjutsu, similar to modern Kendo. It's also a myth that ninjas would have used straight swords. Instead, they likely used the same curved katanas as any other samurai. Ninja training, what we know. So what extra training did ninjas engage in? The driving principle behind ninjutsu is deception. It has been said that all combat is really deception, and ninjutsu simply takes this to its natural extreme. What we know of this supplementary training comes from three ancient ninja scrolls, the Shoninki, the Ninpiden, and the Bansen Shukai. Apologies for my awful pronunciation. These have since been translated into English and can be bought and read by anyone. These texts deal almost exclusively with the use of tools, herbal concoctions, psychological warfare, explosives, disguise and stealth. Again, there's nothing of a physical regimen described, nor are there any combat techniques. Like regular samurai, ninjas would have been born into their professions, with the tradition and fighting styles being passed down from generation to generation, predominantly in the Iga and Koga regions. Other than these scrolls, information on real ninja training comes from individuals who claim a direct family or teaching lineage tracing back to the ninjas of old. There are recently four individuals who have made such claims. The late Seiko Fujita, who claims to be the 14th master of the Koga school, Toshitsuga Takamatsu, Masaki Hatsumi, and Jinichi Kawakami. None of their statements have been proven, however, though this is not to say that they cannot be true. Verification of sources on ninjutsu, then, is extremely difficult and has led to many heated debates. However, several themes and concepts do occur repeatedly across all sources, making it likely that they are at least somewhat accurate. Espionage and Stealth The image of the black-clad ninja crawling across rooftops is only partially true. It's true, for instance, that ninjas would have scaled buildings in this manner. In fact, they even would have carried folding bamboo or rope ladders at times for crossing between rooftops. They may also have used samurai swords as a step up when scaling walls, propping them against the wall and then stepping on the tsuba or handguard. Should someone catch a glimpse of a ninja spy, they would scatter items on the other side of the building as a distraction. 
Ways to mask sounds actually take up a fair chunk of the ninja scrolls. Once inside, ninjas were taught to move close to the walls where the floorboards were least slightly to creak. Hugging walls also allowed them to reduce their visible silhouette. To minimise noise, they would breathe through their mouths and reportedly sometimes insert a small piece of paper to further dampen the sound of their breath. Ninjas also learned to move silently. A number of specific movement patterns were taught to enable this, including a controversial one that may have involved stepping on their own hands. Clothing. Where reality probably differed from the myth, however, is in the garb. There's no evidence that ninjas wore masks, though it's not outside the realms of possibility. Likewise, there is no historical record of ninjas wearing all black. It has been suggested, in fact, that ninjas may have been more likely to wear dark blue, so as to more closely blend into the night sky. However, they would have far more often worn civilian clothes in order to move among crowds unnoticed. A particularly popular ploy was to dress as a homeless person, so as to move particularly unnoticed and to minimise interactions. They would even practice limping and moving so as to appear feeble, lowering others' estimations of their abilities. In other instances, they may have worn large hats to disguise their identity or dressed as farmers. The latter allowed them to carry tools that could be useful for self-defence without arousing suspicion. The Bansen Shukai includes numerous tips and strategies for those interested in mastering the art of disguise, explaining how small details like a pebble in the shoe can alter gates to go a long way towards obscuring identity. The same techniques are used by the CIA to help agents disappear in the field, even switching identities on the move without drawing attention to themselves. Tools. Hand me down the shark repellent bat spray. Shinobi carried a wide range of different tools at different times in order to get the upper hand on their opponents. We've already discussed the use of bamboo ladders, for instance. One of my favourite examples is their use of pointed tacks called caltrops, which they would scatter behind themselves whilst fleeing. Pursuers would then step on these and injure their feet. When infiltrating an enemy base or castle, ninjas would scatter these caltrops around the exit points, keeping note of their exact locations. This way, when discovered, they could escape and take out large numbers of the opposition. Similarly, they have been known to pull down wooden bridges and set fire to access points. This is the perfect example of how a single stealthy ninja can take on a far greater force through sheer cunning. As seen in much fiction, grappling hooks were also used commonly by ninjas. These were not only used for scaling walls, but also for the aforementioned pulling down of bridges. They would also use a thick sack in order to push themselves through brambles and bushes. Likewise, they used a short tool called a kunai for digging their way under fences. One of the simplest tools that many shinobi would carry was a rope. This had countless uses, including lifting other heavy tools after scaling a wall. Ninjas were adept at crafting explosions, poisons, adhesives and more from their surrounding fauna. They even had ingredients for energy snacks that could sustain them for hours on end. Psychological warfare. A large part of ninjutsu was learning how to understand and manipulate people. Many of the soft skills discussed in my video on MI6 training would apply here. Their job would often involve reconnaissance and extracting information, meaning they needed to know how to get people to talk and how to identify potential informants. One piece of advice, possibly from ninja legend Hattori Hanzo, was to approach formerly important individuals who had since fallen out of favour. Such people are more likely to be candid with gossip, while also being in a position to know a lot of sensitive information. Likewise, a ninja must learn to gain the trust of people from all classes and ways of life, to adapt their demeanour and behaviour to fit in. Playing dumb is also a strategy that's often recommended for ninjas. Feigning ignorance increases the likelihood that others will tell you things in confidence, as you appear to pose no threat. This requires the ninja to completely abandon their ego in service of their mission. Overcoming social pressures is an incredibly useful tool, and one that I've talked about in the past with regards to CBT and soft skills. Physical training. Unfortunately, we know very little of the physical training regimen of the ninjas or their hand-to-hand -hand combat. As mentioned, ninjas would have likely received the same training as samurai, with additional skills being taught on top. While emphasis would primarily have been on armed combat, including archery and the use of other tools, samurai would also have learned a number of empty hand techniques and likely jujitsu, from which Aikido, Judo and some forms of Karate such as Wado Ryu are derived. We can also make some assumptions about the type of physical training that would have been logical for ninjas to engage in. Ninjas required a certain degree of athleticism for rope climbing, and they are also known to climb high into trees in order to hide and or use as a lookout. Climbing and bodyweight training then would seemingly be sensible options. Some aforementioned last ninjas do also claim to have some insider knowledge regarding the types of physical training 
that ninjas might have engaged in. Seiku Fujita, for instance, describes ninjas as doing a lot of hiking, being able to walk 350 miles between Edo, Tokyo and Osaka in just three days. Fujita also describes wooden sandals that were designed specifically to train leg strength and balance. He says that the ninjas did indeed train specifically for jumping, and that they were able to jump up to seven feet in the air, high enough to leap straight over an opponent. Assuming this is a vertical jump, this would be two foot higher than what is believed to be the world record, held by Kador Ziani, though not officially verified. It is more than likely then that such claims are hyperbolic or exaggerated, but it's also true that some form of foot or jump training would likely have been involved. More uncredited sources describe ninjas as jumping out of and over holes that they dug for practice, and using weighted vests when jumping. They might also apparently have used calf jumps, jumping using only their feet whilst keeping their legs entirely straight. Kawakami similarly describes walking on the sides of the feet to strengthen them. He also talks about hardening the body through conditioning. So while we can't know for sure, it's possible that ninjas might have supplemented their martial arts training and shinobi no jujutsu training with bodyweight training, plyometrics, jump training, body hardening, climbing and long distance cardio. Mental training. Surprisingly, included in the scrolls is guidance for daily work, suggesting that ninja may have been more than mercenaries. These segments also teach the martial qualities of mundane tasks, Mr. Miyagi style. In short, everything can be training. Kung Fu lives in everything we do, Xiao Zhui. He lives in how we put on the jacket, how we take off the jacket. And lives in how we treat people. Everything is Kung Fu. Ninjas also learned some interesting mental strategies to help them on their missions. These included the use of beans transferred between two pouches for counting. That is to say that rather than have to remember how many enemies they were counting, they simply moved a bean from one bag to the next each time they spotted another combatant. The use of mnemonics is of course something that I'm very interested in. Like many explorers, Shinobi knew how to navigate by looking at the stars, and how to assess the weather and the moon in order to time an infiltration when they would be most concealed. Ninjas used special spells and incantations that they believed could help them on their missions. Of course, today we probably assume that these incantations would not be effective. That said, it's possible that they had some psychological or placebo effects, potentially serving as anchors or mantras that would help to keep them calm under pressure and help them to embody the nature of the animals or perhaps properties that they were interested in more fully. More useful today is the practice of developing attention and sharp reflexes. Janichi Kawakami describes a training method that would involve listening for the drop of a pinprick. Others too have described a similar technique. He and several other sources describe meditation whilst watching a candle flame as well, which is actually a common meditation technique used today. There are those that believe the ninjas were descendants of the Yamabushi, mountain priests who eventually settled in the Koga and Iga regions and began taking on work as assassins and spies. The Yamabushi sought superhuman powers through closeness with nature, asceticism, abstinence, martial arts and feats of endurance. Yamabushi are often pictured sitting underneath waterfalls, which would help to both hone the senses, endure the elements and toughen the body. Whether this was a practice that ninjas in fact continued is uncertain. Likewise, it's possible and not certain that ninjas would have used other similar methods in common with Yamabushi. What we can learn from ninjas today this script is currently nearly 3,000 words long, and I only touch lightly on what we know about ninjas. It's a topic that I'll definitely be exploring more in future. In the next couple of weeks, I'll be uploading a post to the Bioneer looking at how to take all these lessons and directly apply them to modern life. You can also find more information by reading the accompanying post on the Bioneer that goes with this video. Kawakami says that the skills of the ninja are no longer useful today. Whether that's entirely true is up for debate, but we can certainly take the principles of Shinobi no Jutsu and apply them to modern training and modern contexts. What could a ninja do today with a drone, ethical hacking skills, parkour, and potential knowledge of biochemistry? And what benefit could a business person or a politician have by learning the social skills, the soft skills, and the manipulation of the ninja? Combined with the ability to focus intently, stay calm, and move with accuracy, speed, and precision, you could continue in the spirit of the ninja and thrive as a result. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting guys, if you did then please leave a like, please share it around, I worked really hard on this one, especially the research and the script, so let me know what you think, are there any skills here that you think would be relevant to modern life, is there anything interesting about ninjas that you know that I've missed out? 
I'll be doing many more videos like this in future. I've got a look at the life of Bruce Lee coming up. I'll be discussing Nightwing training as I've been promising. I'll be doing a video on body language, on ethical hacking potentially, if there's any interest in that. So let me know if that all sounds good. Stay tuned, thanks a ton for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.